This is Left Side of the Brain. Good evening, good evening, good evening. How is each and every one of you doing out there in TV land today? Today's video is brought to you by nature itself and by a request from a subscriber who said they would like me to do another video out in nature. You know who you are. So you all can thank him for giving me the suggestion to do a video today out in nature. How is everybody doing today? Yes, a beautiful day. Set your mind at ease. We're going in today, but at the same time, it's going to be kind of chill and cool. You know, it's one of those videos when I'm re actually reflecting on the entire purpose of this thing that we call life. Because ultimately, everything that we speak about, as far as the organic portal information, it all boils down to purpose and life. So today we're going to be talking about the ego and how our life is based in sin. Our life's purpose is based in sin and the ego. As you see, you got some campers, some people out there chilling in nature. I don't know them. And as soon as I find a nice spot where I can talk without being listened to, we're gonna get right into this video. And while I'm looking for a spot, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and hit the likes button. Um, go ahead and subscribe to the Instagram at left side of the brain too. Come on, people. Let's go. What's taking y'all so long? I mean, we are getting closer to 200. So why are we still lingering around 105 and 106 subscribers? Go ahead and do that at left side of the brain too. On Instagram also the patreon www.patreon.com slash left side of the brain if you like the content on the channel and you want to support the channel you can also do that let's find a little spot see the little kid out fishing guess we got to go further down today I guess we can just use this moment while I'm searching for synchronicity. Sometimes in life, before you can begin something, you got to be taken to the darkest spot, to the shallowest, lowest point in your life, just so you can get a greater understanding of what everything is about. Let me see. Let me see. There'd be a lot of deers out here. Okay, all right, y'all, we, we just got to start right here. I don't care, because it's taking too long to begin this video. Now, I was um, talking to somebody on the phone today, and the conversation, it started out, we was talking about credit, right? And we, we was talking about, they was telling me about your credit score, how important it is, keeping your credit good, and they was telling me about how you know getting their credit fix worked out for them and you know they was talking about money and being financially stable in life and everything but of course this person was talking to me so any conversation that i engage in with somebody i'm always thinking outside of the box because one thing you're not going to do you're not going to just talk to me and not think I'm not going to respond in a way that's going to push the envelope because that's what I do. I mean, I don't do it all the time. It depends on the person. But this person was a person that's, you know, grew up with me and they know me personally and they know how I am. So even though we were just having a conversation about credit and whatever, it turned to something more meaningful. And I'm the one who took it to that level 
And I asked the person, I said, I asked him, I said, you making me think about something. I said, once a person, you know, get all of this money, they have everything they ever wanted in life. They have their kids. Because I asked them, yeah, I said, once a person get all of this money, then what? I was like, you see, money is basically a cover-up for purpose. You see, I, and I was telling them that as soon as I start talking, let me have to let me have to walk up a little bit because you know someone's walking their dog, and I hate talking around people, certain people. So I'm going to walk further up. And I was telling them, like, wow, y'all, I'm telling y'all, man. Whew, God. I'm sorry about that, y'all. And here's another person. Everywhere I try to go, I mean, how deep or far away do I have to get, man? Gee, man. Okay. And I was telling, here's a natural step. I'm going to just sit right here on this natural step. I hope no termites or anything. It's right there. I'm going to just sit on this natural step. Now, I was saying to that person, I was like, money, you know, I was like, when you take away money, what are we living for? And how I broke it down to them, I was like, okay, you have good credit. Okay. I was like, what brought me to that point? I'm trying to get my, my thoughts together because of y'all got a bad win because people walking around and stuff. And sometimes that makes me my brain because I got to get my, my thoughts back together. Now, when, and I'm kind of breathing heavy too. When the person Okay, what made me say this to the person is I was thinking in my mind, I was like, once you start reaching a certain age and you still chasing money, what is the benefit in that? So I was I started saying that to him and then he said, oh, I get what you're saying, but that's not that's not what I mean. He said, um, he said, I get what you're saying. And once I had said that, the conversation had switched gears. It went from just talking about credit. And it started getting more serious. So the conversation conversation switched gears. And he said, well, really, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be blunt with you. He said, when I'm talking about money and stuff, he said, I'm really thinking about survive comfort. He said comfort, just living comfortable, me and my kids. So we'll just be living comfortable. So we won't have to stress and, you know, have a life of stress, worrying about your day to day, where you can get money to get food, your light bill pay and whatever. So I understood that I understood. And I said, you know what? I agree with you on that point. But then I took it even deeper. I said. I said. I said, let me give you an example. This is what I told him. I said, if they took away. All the money tomorrow. Because most people wake up every morning to make money, to go to work. OK, I'm, I'm building a point here. I, I said to him, I said, if you woke up one morning and they took all the money away. And I said, I know this. This is just a hypothetical situation. This is the exact words I said to him. And if you and if they took all the money away, what would your purpose be then? That's what I said to him. I pulled the blanket away. I said, what would your purpose be then? And then he kind of went blank. I said, now what I'm getting at is this. If that scenario took place, then the only thing that we would be living for like as humans would be for sex. I said we would be just like animals at that point because animals don't wake up and go to jobs. Animals don't worry about paying light bills, phone bills, car insurance, none of that stuff. 
I said, we would be just like animals. And he was like, hmm, that, that, that make, he said, that makes sense. I was like, and I took it even further. I said, this life then revolves around sex. I said, because the only thing that animals do, the only thing they concentrate on is having sex, having more little puppies, more little deer, more little cows, more little chickens, you know, so forth and so on. I said, we would be living the same exact way. And then I took it another notch. I said, because we would be living just primarily for sex, that means that the woman is the purpose in this world. This world not only revolves around sex, but it also revolves around the womb of the woman. I said to him, I said, because no person comes into this world without no person comes into this world absent of the womb of the woman because that is the entry point you know and i was still you know leading the conversation at this point i was just telling him that when you think about it man like everything revolves around females everything revolves around sex in this world because it's our sole purpose. Once you take away everything else, if you took away your desires, your career, your hobbies, what would you be left with? You would still be left with a penis and a vagina and a vagina and woman would be left with eggs. She'll still have a menstruation. So when you take it to the bare essence, that's what it's all about having sex in this world. So we kept on talking and talking. And then I said to him, I said, this world is sin based. S-I-N, sin. I said, this world is sin based. It's based in our ego. I told him, I said, egotism is what drives people to wake up in the morning. Without an ego, you wouldn't want to even wake up. I told him that some people, we, we have been brainwashed with egotism so much that some people who are at the verge of committing suicide, they stop. They think about it. They put the gun down or they put the cup of poison down. Egotism makes them not want to commit suicide. You might say, what you mean by that, left side? I'm about to explain. A person about to commit suicide, they will say to themselves, what would people think about me if I did this? And then I told a person that our egos is so strong that we even think about what people going to think about us after we are dead. We carry that ego over into the other realm thinking about and you're not going to even be here and still thinking about what somebody going to be thinking about you when you die and then i dropped a bombshell on them i said that's why people be thinking about leaving legacies oh, i want to leave a legacy behind you want to leave a legacy behind because you want to be remembered and then i told him that and when i said that he said mm, that's a good point he started agreeing with what I was saying at that point because I started explaining it further and further. And he was like, you know what? That's a good point. I never thought about it like that. I said, yeah. I said, we are so we are so inundated with ego that we want to leave legacies. Even when we're dead and gone, somebody will forego committing a suicide because they thinking about, oh, what somebody going to think about me? People leave suicide letters because the ego of the person is what's making them write a suicide letter. You know, wanting to leave a final thought in somebody. That's based in egotism. And I was telling him that this whole world is based in sin because of that. Our egos, I was telling him like our egos is a part of our competitive nature. And I started ex explaining how in nature, like you will have gorillas, right? You will have 
the alpha gorilla called a silverback. And they will compete with the other males based on who got the loudest roar or which gorilla can beat his chest the hardest so they can um, mate with the female. You see, that's all about ego. And you got like the pelican. I'm basically saying the conversation we had in verbatim. Um, you have like the pelican and it has the feathers, the male pelican. It has the feathers and it'll do this dancing ritual for the woman, the female bird. So she'll mate with him. You see? Ego. You see, it's based in ego. And I was telling him like, the only way other than living for other people I was telling him, I said, you would have to go completely monk, meaning you wouldn't care because he was like, well, I want to live. The reason why people do it, he was trying to, you know, explain, you know, being a giving me a, uh, a counter argument. He wasn't really arguing, but he was just giving me like another opinion about it. And he said that, um, well, the reason why people do it, because they just want to stay up and this and this and that i said but some people be trying to make so much money more money than than what they even need then i said really all you need to live is a banana an apple or an orange a pineapple some bread some water i mean you don't need jordans you don't need the latest trendy clothes you don't need any of that if you if a person was to completely let their ego, if they were to completely let it go and just live, you wouldn't care about nothing nobody said about you. You wouldn't comb your head because you wouldn't even care. You would just be like living out in a cave, just meditating. You know, there has been um, certain cases where monks, like Hindu monks called shadows, certain Hindu and Buddhist monks who have actually died sitting in a lotus meditation position. And the thing is, they die in that position. Their bodies mortify, but they don't rot and get a stinking smell. And I find that very uh, intriguing as to why they don't, you know, rot and get a stinking smell. You know, they let go of their ego. And I was telling him how, like, Everything we do is just based in competition and egotism. And I was like, I said to him, like, if I didn't have the skill sets that I was born with, like the skills and hobby, the skills that I have, I wouldn't even want to be here. I would just close my eyes and just leave here. Like, I couldn't imagine just living for money. Just living to make a lot of money, just pleasing the flesh, just eating food and drinking wine and eating cheese crackers. And I couldn't I couldn't imagine living like that. You see what I'm saying? And that's what made me bring up the conversation to him. You see, because. You know, and it relates it relates to this whole organic portal thing, because this whole organic portal realm that we live in. It's all based in egotism. And I was trying to think if you forego your ego, what would you be left with? And in the duration of the conversation, I told him that if you let your ego, if you just let it go, the only thing that you will be left with is free, a spirit of free giving, a spirit of philanthropy. I said, that's the only thing that a person can do that's not competitive based, that's not ego based. Just being a philanthropist, just giving freely without without expecting something in return. That would be the only thing, but everything else we do in this life is based in sin. You know, a person go to the club, right? They dress up, you know, you go, you go shopping for shoes. You, um, you know what I'm saying? You, you putting on your best suit. You go to a wedding, you dress up. Why are you dressing up at the wedding? Because you thinking about what somebody is thinking about when they look at you. 
So this whole world is sin. It's based in sin. And, you know, we kept talking and we kept talking. And, and I was saying to him, like, that's why when you, okay, you read the story of Jesus, right? The Christ nature would be letting go of your ego. The Christ nature would be giving up your egotism and putting on the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ would mean what I said. When, when Christ came, he died freely. Nothing that Christ did was about his ego. None of it was about his self. Have you noticed that? He didn't come in this world competing with people. It was all about selflessness. That's what it was all about. And that selflessness, you switch up the words a little bit, selflessness, selfishness. We've been talking about that, that selfishness. Selfishness, in the sense of what I'm saying, it keeps you out of that egotism. That's why I be telling you all that loneliness, loneliness will get you further away from this sin-based nature of egotism. Because when you are around people who are not on this level, what you want to find out, what you're going to find yourself doing? Competing. And when you're competing, you are competing, you are what? You are in your ego. You are dealing in your, your lower nature. When you're on your jobs, it's all about egotism. You're trying to impress the manager. You're trying to impress the boss because you want to raise. You want to... Uh, but the raise... Thank you, spirit. The raise is an artificial definition of raise because you are on the job working in your egotism, your lower self. But they telling you that you're getting a raise to your higher self. But it's a artificial raise. It's not a raise to your higher self just because you're making more money and getting a raise on your job. The raise, the true raise is understanding this what i'm saying now that would that is what would raise you to your higher self and the conversation went further and i was telling him how when when you don't like money one thing about having a lot of money when you have money all the time when you always have things you never experience a hardship Hardships, one thing I have been through in my life is hardships. And what hardships will do, they will teach you lessons. Let me give y'all a story. I had got real sick one time. And, well, let me give y'all two stories. One time, I didn't have a place to stay. I was homeless for a little while. I was sleeping in the back of my Jeep. I had moved to a new city. And I had left on the whim of just inspiration. I was like, you know what? I want to move. I'm about to do it. I'm that type of person. So I had to stay in a homeless shelter for a couple days. And during that time when I was waiting to get myself together, the whole world was talking to me. The buildings was talking to me. And all it was saying was money, money. It was like everything was laughing at me and mocking me. Like, you can't come in here. You can't come in here without money. You can't do this without money. You can't get a, all you can do is sleep in, sleep in the back of your Jeep. Everybody just looked like they was against me. People with money walking around because they weren't thinking about me. They didn't care about me. Only I was experiencing what I was going through inside of my mind. But it taught me a lesson. It taught me a lesson, a real life hardcore lesson of what life is all about. It let me know that this world is all about money. Until you actually have to experience that, you won't realize that this world is all about money. Now you can hear that all the time, but let somebody get kicked out of your house, have to sleep on a park bench, have to go through that. And you will understand what this life is all about. Another situation, something happened to me. I had got sick and I was at the hospital. And 
at that moment, I didn't care who helped me. It didn't matter what race or none of that. And it taught me a lesson. And the lesson was when you are sick, race doesn't matter. When you got somebody helping you, because it was this, it was this white girl and she was going through the same thing I was going through. She was feeling nauseated. I was feeling nauseated. We both was throwing up and we looked at each other and it was like, we wasn't looking at each other like we was opposite races. We was looking at each other like, oh man, I'm sick. I hope you feel better. And I was telling her in my mind, I hope you get better. Because at that moment, any other type of thought, any type of negative thought or anything, it would have made me just feel worse. So it's certain moments in life that the only thing you can think about is positivity because anything else would just make you feel sick. You see, and, I, and I'm saying that to say hardships will bring you closer to the reality of everything. You see what I'm saying? Money, see money is is a blindfold it, it, it takes you away from nature it um creates a artificial world hold up hold up y'all we do this sometimes <sighs> this is left side of the brain y'all know why i got quiet just chill for a second that's why i had to quiet down so y'all chill for a second hold up hold up all right, we back. I just don't like talking. Y'all know I, I just don't like talking around them type of people. Like this type of stuff. If I was just on the phone having a little dull conversation, it would be it would be different. But because I'm talking about this type of stuff, I don't like talking to, like this around the type of people. Because number one, I don't want nobody. What you talking about? I don't want them interrupting me. I don't want them. You know, they gone now. Enough about them. Yeah. So money, it will do that, man. It uh, see. Without money, everybody's on the same level. And that's that's one thing they don't want. Because the evil, the darkness, the evil rulers of this world, they don't fit into nature. So without money, they would be exposed because they don't fit into nature. So they have to create money to make the people who fit into nature fit outside of nature by following their system which they gonna win and control because they built it see the nature built us we are part of nature their system is built by an artificial nature the economy that word economy the root word for that word economy is eco, the ecosystem. They're just selling things that came out of the ecosystem, the economy. In their world, you'll never be rich enough. So if you if you chasing rich, if you chasing wealth, you know, you're going to lose. It's a scripture that says, what does it profiteth a man to gain the world, but to lose his soul? What we say soul, why would it say, what does it profiteth a man to gain the world, but to lose his soul? You know why I say that? Because the soul, like we always say, it is a collection of information. Think about that. You can't lose a soul if it's nothing. So what is a soul? It is a collection of information. So what that scripture is saying is, what does it profit a man to gain all of this? Gain all of this information and you will exchange it for money. What does it profit a man to gain the world but to lose his soul? It's not talking about the natural world. Because it wants us to gain this. It's talking about that artificial world. That's what it means. And sometimes when you are too, you know, like I did yesterday, I did the, um, when you're not living for yourself, when you are too engaged in others, you gaining the world 
Because think about it. When you are hanging around a bunch of trivial people, and that's what I'm going to call them, trivial people, dead beats, they don't have no conversation. Yeah, you gaining the world in a sense of gaining, you know, being a part of the clique. You can say that's a form of gaining something. You're gaining status, but yet you're not tuning in to left side of the brain videos. Not saying I'm the only one with information, but you're not tuning in to left side of the brain videos. You're not concentrating on this type of, uh, you know, energy and information. But you at you over there with the trivial people gaining the world, gaining uh, popularity, gaining their respect, because that's what it's all about. It's ego. Even when you want to have a lot of friends, that's egotism. It's also a form of cowardice. A person that. All right, I'm going to tell, tell you like this. A person show me a person with a lot of friends. And you just showed me a weak person. I'll say it again. Show me a person who always hanging around a lot of people. And you just showed me a person. Individually. They are a weakling. People that. that I'm going to give you an example in nature. When you see a bunch of ants. An ant, a ant when he is solo. Because they are a form of a organic portal creature. Because they need a social network. By they self, they are weak. But you put them in a group of other ants, then they become something. They, be, they are part of a, a social organism. That's why I say, show me a person that always got to be around other people. You just show me a weak person. And any man, any man shouldn't need to hang around a lot of people to give him purpose or a self-identity. That's why this, this channel mascot is the jaguar and the turtle because I explained uh, because I'm in this world partially like a turtle. But at the same time, we I'm in a shell. But back to that ego thing that I was speaking about. Yeah, this world is based in egotism. And when I was talking to the person, I told him this. I said, even though this world is based in egotism. In the same regards. We have to use that ego. And I'm going to give you an example. When you are out here in this world, during the times when you have to be around organic portals, sometimes you have to show a certain toughness. Because if not, they will, they will run you over. It's like being in jail. You can't practice 100% humility and selflessness inside of certain situations so uh, like i told him it's kind of like a double-edged sword you know we we still in this world we still in this environment we want to live exactly how left side is saying but we are in a world we are living in hell so i understand Excuse me. What I'm trying to say is you want to live without an ego as much as possible. But at times you may have to compete. But the thing is, you know that you are competing just to survive. When you do use your ego, you know that it's out of survival. Like, so you won't look be looked at as a pushover or somebody that people can just walk all over. You have to have a certain tenacity about you, you know, because everything in nature, man, is living in fear, man. It's a lot of ego, even in animals and stuff, man, like especially like, you know, lions and, you know, with this whole alpha male lion and the beta male lion. And it's a lot of competition amongst different species. You see animals in the woods and you would think they living in peace. But then when you think about it, they got to worry about some human shooting them. You know, deers running out in the middle of the highway because man has encroached further and further upon their natural sanctuary. 
to the point they don't have nowhere to go. You see what I'm saying? Um, they getting hit by 18 wheelers. You got rabbits. You know, they selling rabbits in, a, in in pet zone and you know them animal stores, commercially selling rabbits, things that was not meant to be. But because we live in a world of egotism, it has affected every part in nature. It has created imbalance in every part of nature. And that's because we are at this present moment, we're living in a sin nature. And the more sin that we ex that we live under, the more imbalanced we will become. That's why I emphasize so much staying to yourself. Can you see the kid over there fishing? Get you a hobby, something like this. Do something. Do something that would that will take you out of people. Get into this world environment. You know what I'm saying? Do something that'll get you away from people. Because the more you're around them, the more you're not, you know, going to be able to be who you are. You can be that monk by just getting away. It's easy to be a monk. You don't have to be in a in a Tibetan mountain or some you don't have to be in a Shaolin temple. Like I said before, I carry this cave around with me. I walk around in meditation. Meditation doesn't always mean sitting in a lotus position in a corner somewhere. Meditation is keeping a mental awareness 24/7. 24-7, 365 days a year. Keeping a mental awareness of where you are. Because just like prison, if you ever been locked up, if you ever been locked down, some of you who are listening, you've been locked up before. If you ever been locked down, the moment you forget that you lock, that you locked down, you become prey. You want to be on somebody's dinner plate. Because you got too comfortable. So that's what I'm saying. In this world, you can't get too comfortable. You got to have that mental awareness at all times. That's why they say, that's what they be meaning by um, the awakening, the awakening state. You know, organic portals, can I say they sleep? I wouldn't say organic portals are sleep. They not sleep. Human prison bars are not sleep. Again, we about, to, we, about to, we about to go ahead and expose another false teaching. Thank you, spirit. When people say somebody is asleep, ain't nobody sleep in this world. Nobody is asleep because everybody got a job that they are doing. Nobody is asleep out here. Everybody got a job that they doing. And... I think I'm going to do some more videos today. Um, I got some more subjects I want to touch on, but I just wanted to um, touch on this. Um, the ego, letting your ego go and understanding that, you know, this is a sin based life we live in. People are driven by sin, the sin of egotism. That's the fuel that make people want to go on another day. Because. They saying to themselves, what's such and such going to think about me? What my mom going to think about me if I don't become a dentist like they wanted me to become? If I don't become a lawyer, like we're not living for ourselves, man. We living for other people, man. That's that's the worst way to live. You know, live for yourself, man. And um this is left side of the brain with another video living for yourself go ahead and subscribe to the channel add us on instagram at left side of the brain too feel free to donate www.patreon.com slash left side of the brain and i got some more in me today so y'all stay tuned i'm about to drop some more signing up